What's going on YouTube? My name is Rocky and I'm an expat that has been living outside the United States for close to five years. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how I can be in Paris, Mexico City, Montego Bay, sipping coconut water between my lunch breaks, or here in Brazil in a city like Sao Paulo or Salvador, all while my employer thinks I'm working from my home in Dallas, Texas. And I'm going to do that with the secure and private technology of the GLINet routers, specifically the GLINet Slate 7, which I've got with me, and a Flint 2, which is paired with my ISP router back at home. So if you're a remote worker or you're a digital nomad and you want privacy, security, and zero questions from your employer, then this is the video for you. So I accomplish all this with what's called a site-to-site -site VPN connection. So what you'll need to accomplish this and get this set up is an ISP that's compatible and that's not CGN added, a couple of ethernet cords. I recommend a long cat six ethernet cord. You have your Flint two, which stays connected to your ISP router at home. And you have your slate seven, which I'm using right now. And I'm recommending because it's such an excellent router. And that's the router that's going to go with you on your travels, wherever you go. Now my Flint two is connected at a cousin's house back in Dallas. And that's where my server is going to live. So your Flint 2 is your server. And I take the client, which is the Slate 7, I take that with me. Now what happens is my Slate 7 automatically connects to my Flint 2 WireGuard server that has my site-to-site -site VPN tunnel connected and installed on it. This connection is always on. Once I've configured it, it's always good to go. So every time I connect my laptop or my work phone, to my Slate 7's Wi-Fi, it routes all my traffic securely through my home in Dallas. This means that I'm browsing the internet as if I'm physically sitting in Dallas with the same IP, through the same network, with all of the same network information that's going to hit the firewall of my employer or of any of the sites that I go out and visit. Then I connect to my company's VPN, and it's an enterprise VPN. In this case, it's Cisco AnyConnect, and that happens from my IP address in Dallas. So then I'm just another employee logging in from their secure home ISP network. No red flags, no geo triggers, just business as usual. So when I open Chrome and visit a website from here in Sao Paulo or wherever I am, the traffic goes from my laptop to my Slate 7 and from my Slate 7 to my Flint 2 in Dallas via that VPN tunnel that I was talking about and from my Flint 2, that's in Dallas, out into the internet via my home ISP router back in the States. Now, there's a few requirements that you need to have together before you're able to set this up successfully. Now, the baseline requirements are ISP and ISP router related, and ISPs are just your internet service providers, so like Verizon, Spectrum, Xfinity, et cetera. And the first thing you must make sure of is that your connection isn't CG natted. And basically all it is is a technique used by ISPs to conserve SCARS public IPv4 addresses by allowing multiple customer devices using private IPs to share a single public IPv4 address simultaneously. Now, along with that comes some limitations, like you won't be able to log into the default gateway of your router and basically change some settings that you'll need to change for the setup, mainly port forwarding. Now you can go online and check to see if your ISP is CG NAT, or you can give your provider a call and just ask one of the representatives on the line if your connection is CG NAT. But generally, if you're in the United States, the best ISPs you use are AT&T, Verizon, Spectrum, Xfinity, Comcast, and Google Fiber. Those are all not CG NAT. Uh, but like I said, it's important to just check online. But generally speaking, these providers that I listed are not CG natted. So this is important. Like the CG nat stuff is super important. So make sure you don't skip this step because without it, you're not going to be able to change some of the settings on your default gateway. Now, in terms of your default gateway, you need to be able to access that. Now, a lot of these ISP providers, they have apps that accompany your connection that allow you to go into the advanced setting and change things like port forwarding or any other of the firewall rules or something like that related to your ISP connection. Others will allow you to just go to a special IP address that you can just type into your web browser while you're connected to your network and access a portal 
similar to the one that I'm showing on the screen right now that allows you to go into your network and change some advanced settings. And if you want to find this ISP um, designated IP address, you can just type in your ISP name, default gateway IP in Google, and it should appear. So if you're using something like Comcast, you can say Comcast default gateway IP, and that's the search that you'll put in Google. And then the, the IP address should appear. And that IP address is what you use to log into your router. Now, every router has this, even your travel router, um, your router at work, like every router has a default gateway because they have under their subnet, different de devices connected to it. So, you know, usually you'll see things that, uh, or you'll see gateway IPs that begin with like 192 or uh, 192.168.something.something .something .something or 10.0.0.0.1 or .12 or something. So it begins in sort of in that fashion. The next thing you'll need is obviously the routers themselves. So you'll use the Flint 2, which still stay connected to your ISP router back at home. You'll also have the Slate 7, which I'm recommending now. I know I recommended the Slate AX, which is still a really good router, but the Slate 7, which just came out, is by far beating it. So if you want speed, reliability, and you know optimal use from your travel router, just go with the Slate 7. You would also actually need very, very fast upload speed. Now, I recommend upload speed no less than 40, 50 megabits per second of upload speed. Now, I know I recommended 30 in my last video, but if you really, really want to be safe and make sure you can do all your Zoom calls, you can do um, all your streaming, downloading all the applications you need to do and download for work and other things, as well as just running multiple tabs and applications at the same time and using multiple screens and everything that you want to do. You need a minimum of at least 40 to 50 megabits per second of upload speed. That should be good to go for anything you want to do work related. Now I've set these routers up more than 450 times for digital nomads and expats alike. And I promise you, I get the same questions or different versions of the same questions all the time. And I thought it would be just really good to just answer some of those questions here in this video. Like for instance, a lot of people ask me, can I just use my regular ISP router as a VPN server? And the answer is you can't. Most ISP routers don't allow for full VPN server capabilities on the routers that they send out to you and install in your home. So and even if they do, they're limited in a lot of features like custom firewall rules, port forwarding, dynamic DNS, and full WireGuard and OpenVPN server functionality. Thus, you have to connect a different router that's more capable, like the Flint 2, to your ISP network router. The Flint 2 actually gives you full control, and I can configure custom DNS rules, enable a kill switch, monitor your traffic, update firmware, and reboot remotely. Plus, it supports WireGuard, which is super fast and efficient for a secure network connection. Another question I get is, do I need to set this up each time? And the answer is no. Once you've set this up the first time, it's plug and play. As soon as I turn on my Slate 7, it connects to my Flint 2 automatically and no manual steps are required. It picks up the VPN tunnel and routes all my traffic through my Dallas IP address almost instantly. Now, there is a slight caveat to this. If you change your ISP and basically go from like, let's say AT&T to Verizon, for instance, that is going to nullify your connection because you set everything up on an AT&T router and now you're switching to Verizon. So, I mean, that just kind of makes sense. So you'll have to set this up again. Or alternatively, if you set up your AT&T router or you set up the connection on an AT&T router, and let's say you want to increase your plan, like you want to go from 300 up and 200 down to, I don't know, maybe one gig up and 500 down, something like that, or one gig down and 500 up, whatever it is. Let's just say you want to increase your speed and that requires a router change and equipment change that will also nullify your setup. So just make sure that whoever's hosting your server, you tell them, hey, if you switch out ISPs or you plan on moving, let me know so I can make plans to have this done somewhere else or if you want to upgrade your speed and your plan, make sure to let me know 
so I can verify with the ISP or have them verify with the ISP whether or not that involves a router change because that is going to just nullify your connection. So keep that in mind. You only need to set this up once, but if you change equipment or if you change ISP, that's going to mess your connection totally up and just like nullify it. So uh, just be aware of that. Now, a question I get by far the most is what if I need to sign into my enterprise VPN for work? like Cisco AnyConnect, Palo Alto Labs, or many of the other enterprise VPNs out there? And the answer is yes, but it depends. Now, in most cases I've seen, like I said, I've set this up more than 450 times. In 97% of the cases I've seen, you're able to set this up if your company has an enterprise VPN, and even if they pair it with an authenticator like Okta, Google Authenticate, or many of the other authenticators like dual mobile, right? Because most companies don't really have super stringent and strict security unless you're like in some sort of company like CrowdStrike or some sort of other company that values security and might beef up the security on their network, on their firewalls. So, um, but that's the beauty of this setup. I can connect to my company VPN from a trusted US based IP address and if they only allow connections from the United States or if they geo flag logins, this setup will keep you safe. Cisco AnyConnect thinks I'm in Texas, so I'm, they don't you know, see that I'm actually in Brazil, so it connects without a hitch. And like I said, because I, I know there's gonna be some all police, like, well, this is not gonna work for everybody. Like, I know that it's not going to work in like maybe 2% of the cases. But in most cases that I've seen, like I said, I've set this up a lot. Most cases that I've seen, it works. And people are able to travel to many, many countries. I have so many stories from different setups that I've done for people in the last year and a half. And this works in most cases. Another question I get, which is super common, is can my company still track me um, is there geolocation on my laptop? Now, you should read your company's uh, sort of uh, contract that they've given you because being able to track an employee uh, is something that they have to disclose to you in your contract. So go look over your contract and see whether you, you know that's stipulated there because they legally are obligated. I mean, at least in the US, as far as I'm concerned, in the US, they're legally obligated to let you know that they're tracking you. But to answer that question, technically, if your laptop has Wi-Fi and location services enabled, there is still a slight risk of passive tracking. For example, on Mac OS and Windows, they can use Wi-Fi triangulation or even GPS on some devices. So what I recommend is just turning off your location services if you're able to, disable Bluetooth, stay connected only through the Slate's private Wi-Fi, and do so through the Ethernet because that's the, that's the best and fastest connection that you're going to get while you're abroad. Another question I get is what about my work phone? Like what if I need to make client calls? That's an excellent question. What you can do is connect your work phone to the Slate 7 as well and just make calls through data over your network back in the States or Canada, wherever your, your server is. Uh, so when I need to make calls to US clients for a job that I had in the past, I use Wi-Fi calling or a VoIP app like Google Voice and it would show a US number and there's a lot of other services that you can use as well that will give you a US number and no one suspects a thing. As long as you're connected to that travel router, uh, the call is gonna be clear, consistent, and especially if your upload speed back in the States is very, very solid. Another very common question I get is, will they know that I'm using a VPN? And the short answer is no. Not unless they're doing some deep packet inspection of traffic patterns or have some endpoint management software that scans for VPN software. But because I'm not running a VPN app like Nord or, Sys or uh, what they call it, Express VPN, I'm just connected to my slate. They'd have to inspect network packets to even guess what I'm tunneling. And most companies aren't gonna do that unless you're flagged for some reason or maybe you're slacking and they're just like, okay, let's see what this guy's doing or this gal's doing. So most companies aren't gonna do that. Should I turn off Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on my laptop? Yes, turn off the laptop's built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Only use the Ethernet if possible. Now, if that's not possible, you can log into the Wi-Fi's, uh, the travel router's default gateway. 
uh, through an IP address that's usually on the bottom of the router, um, which is also configurable as well. And you can connect through Wi-Fi repeater if ethernet isn't an option. Why does my upload speed matter so much? Now your upload speed matters a lot because your Flint 2 server location is super critical because you're basically streaming data from your home to yourself abroad. And like I said, I recommend 50 or more megabits per second for smooth upload speed, smooth video calls, VPN stability, and low latency. So if you drop below 10 megabits per second of upload speed, performance starts to slip and suffer a lot, especially with video calling meetings and a bunch of other things like file sharing and syncing. So that becomes a problem if your upload speed is too low. So it's very crucial. It's one of the most crucial things right behind the CG NAT. Now, another common question I get is, does Okta or Microsoft Authenticator track location? Okta and MS Authenticator don't actively track your location like GPS apps, but they can log your login IP addresses. That's why this setup works so well because your login IP address is always showing, like in my case, would be Dallas or whatever it is, wherever it is, your ISP is set up. So if it's Minnesota, it will show Minnesota. If it's California, it'll show California instead of Montego Bay or Paris. Also, if location history is turned on in your phone or your apps, it's wise to turn it off for additional privacy. But for authentication purposes, your home IP address is all that shows. So there it is, people. That's how I've stayed under the radar and how you can stay under the radar too while you're traveling or living abroad and working for your US-based employer that only allows you to work in the United States. Now, if you want this set up for yourself and don't wanna deal with the tech headaches, I do help people, like I've said before, to help them uh, achieve this setup by booking a consultation with me. I will leave that information on the screen and in the description so you can reach out to me. And if this video helped you out and open your eyes to new remote work strategies and gave you hope for being able to work abroad with your remote job, go ahead and smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that bell notification icon so you'll be notified when I make awesome remote work content like this. Catch you guys later.